G'day, welcome back to the channel and thank you for joining me. Now, as you may have seen, I haven't put out too many videos lately. I focus mainly on the remote ID thing and that's what we're at again today. I would like to share with you my submission for the um, CASA's uh, request for public responses to the proposed uh, or a proposed remote ID mandate here in Australia. So here it is and uh, we'll switch to the uh, screen cam and uh, I'll read it for you because, um, you know, it kind of outlines this, uh, the arguments. Um, if I've missed anything, well, it's too late now, but please put it down below. Um, but you may be able to use this video to send it forward uh, to someone um, to, you know, uh, articulate the argument in a way other than writing. Um, yes. So let's get into it. Okay, so I have changed microphone. Please excuse the change in my voice. Response. Remote ID for unmanned aerial systems. Summary. No evidence or argument has been made to warrant the further regulation of sub one kilogram unmanned aerial systems slash vehicles, UAS slash UAV. The proposed changes to the regulation regarding the recreational operation of sub one kilogram UAS will have an extraordinary and detrimental effect upon the model aviation, hobbyists, education and aviation innovation. This document discusses this highly important matter further. Remote ID for unmanned aerial systems slash vehicles is currently being proposed for use in Australian airspace. A need to develop and upgrade the existing air traffic control system is recognized by all users of the mentioned airspace. However, this proposal has the potential, if not implemented with due care, pardon my cat, to severely damage the model aviation hobby. The breadth and overreach being seen in this implementation overseas has left all recreational users feeling disenfranchised, disregarded, and pushed aside. These are good members of their various local communities and have been enjoying the use of, it, of the airspace for many years without causing a hazard to other members of the aviation or greater communities. Very little attention has been put into understanding the different types of recreational users their needs and the specific profiles that they represent in, with regard to the differing operations that, the, sorry, risk profiles that they represent in, with regard to the differing operations that they regularly conduct. Little effort has been put into, the un, into understanding the dangers represented by model aviation craft under one kilogram, and those studies done seem to have been ignored by policymakers. The same can be said in regard to the levels of inclusion that hobbyists have been given in deciding the changes to the system within which they will operate. At the same time that safety and security is touted as the need for more regulation of what are in effect toys. Areas of aviation such as ultralights, hand gliding and parasailing which do regularly have fatalities, some in the double digits per annum, are left unregulated and indeed, in some cases, unlicensed or monitored. Like these other recreational airspace users, and of significantly less risk than them. Model aviation recreational hobby pilots should be allowed to partake equally. If one takes a mental step back to appraise the overall situation, this focus upon the model aviation hobby seems unfairly discriminatory especially given the fact that this is a recreation outlet for many whom are less able to otherwise enjoy the great outdoors. The inclusion within the current and proposed rules of craft of 251 grams being grouped in with those weighing almost an order of magnitude greater clearly demonstrates an approach lacking in the required nuance or an appreciation of the actual situation on the ground. This is a totally arbitrary limit and is not reflective of the types of UAVs being used in the model aviation community, which are largely under one kilogram and over 250 grams. It also disregards the different types of operations that various users regularly conduct, 
all the findings of what little UAV manned air aircraft collision testing has been done in the sub one kilogram class weight class. Excuse me. Whilst it has been made obvious through empirical testing that UAVs of medium and large size commonly used in commercial operations can pose a significant risk to manned aircraft. There are marked differences in the dangers posed by different classes of UAV. In reality, it is hard to find comprehensive data about the sub one kilogram class commonly used by the recreational community. In addition, it is difficult to access that which exists without un incurring undue costs as a public consultation respondent. However, there is no evidence to support 250 grams as the cutoff or danger point that poses a risk to aircraft. CASA has been previously made aware of studies showing that the force, excuse me, an impact of something as large as two kilo, as a two kilogram drone has less impact than a, that of a similar sized bird. Furthermore, it is indicative that the sub one kilogram class of UAV is considered to be of minimal to no risk due to the emission of data in published results of research reviews that are freely available. An example of this can be seen in the findings of studies the findings from studies conducted at the Crashworthiness for Aerospace and Structures and Hybrids Crash Lab at Virginia Tech by Javed Bayendor, PhD Director, Walter O'Brien, PhD, Kang, uh, Yang Kong Song, and Kevin Schroeder. I apologize if, if I got the names wrong. Based on mass and size of hobbyist drones, they can exert different degrees of damage on impact to an airplane. Professional multi-copter drones that are commercially available, four to five kilograms, can cause irreversible damage on the, pri to, to, on the primary structures of the airplane, including the flight deck windshield pillars, or potential catastrophic failure on non-primary secondary structural components, such as control surfaces, radar dome, flaps, slats, etc. Large and medium sized hobby drones, one to three kilograms, can potentially cause critical damage. The impulse at impact for this type of drone can be large enough to damage non primary structures. Now, um, I, uh, I, I, I find that there is, I do go into this, I'm sorry I've broken character, I do go into this, but I find there is a problem with. It, uh, again, the classification of hobbyists. To continue reading, apologies. Please note the non-inclusion of drones under one kilogram in their findings and the non-committal tone of the t final two sentences. The writer suspects this is because bird strikes of a similar weight category have always been commonplace in manned aviation and are indeed a known risk. It is common for airports to have dedicated staff for deterring loitering bird life. Modern aircraft are designed to be subject to these incidents without critical or catastrophic failure. This is discussed in the aforementioned Crab Crash Labs report. The majority of recreational hobbyists fly craft under one kilogram. Those that do not tend to be either conducting beyond visual line of sight operations at a hobby airfield flying large scale or acrobatic craft or operating a DJI or similar camera drone. The imposition of a proposed remote ID system on craft under one kilogram is overreach and unduly punishes the vast majority of model aviation enthusiasts who've, whom have been doing the same thing for years and never been a problem. There needs to be a distinction between photography self-piloting drones like DJI Phantoms, and recreational hobby model aviation. Perhaps weight limits should be different depending on the core function of the drone. Further highlighting the lack of nuance taken in the proposed remote ID and in Civil Aviation Safety Authority, the RPAS and AAM Strategic Regulatory Roadmap, is the way in which different users are grouped. The inclusion of all of the various types of recreational users under the designation hobbyist discounts the large differences in the ways that these users enjoy the world of flight. 
the aviation hobby attracts a broad range of individuals whom are attracted to different aspects of it. For example, a short non-inclusive list of the various recreational users would be camera drone operators, park flyers, children flying toys, club members, first person view racers, first person view freestylers, fixed wing first person view cruisers, and long range enthusiasts. Please note one could have made the above list longer to increase its accuracy, but even at this obtuse level of delineation, there are eight categories, all with different wants and needs. Only two groups listed above would benefit from remote ID. These are the camera drone operators and the long range enthusiasts. Everyone else will be unfairly disadvantaged. What is more, of all the mentioned groups above, only one has been known to be a source of airspace conflicts, and that is the group referred to as camera drone operators. This is the least cautious, trained, or aware type of UAV operator, and also the type of drone that requires very little aviation skill or knowledge to fly. Given the overcounter purchasing and highly automated nature of DJI and similar camera drones, it should be easy to have this category regulated separately. The restricting of operating non-remote ID equipped craft to designated flight fields, flight fields is highly flawed and will result in loss of access to the hobby for the disabled and infirm. These individuals may not be able to access their given field and thus lose quality of life at a time when it might be so precious. Flight fields are not free to attend and will impose yet another cost on the hobby, to the hobbyist. The pricing of the equipment required to implement remote ID is not, probably, is not being properly considered. Members of my Discord community have reported pricing in excess of $200 AUD for the cheapest option delivered to your door. The expectation that recreational users should bear this is absolutely unreasonable. This is more than a lot of hobby craft costs to build and operate for their entire lives. Concerns abound in the hobby community about the very future of the aviation hobby. Users are worried that the recent growth and interest will be stifled and with it the impressive rate of innovation and development that these systems of these systems will drastically slow. Without easy and readily available access to the aviation hobby, what will inspire the next generation of engineers? STEM education programs will find an exciting and successful avenue of study cut off. More than one UAV flight control system has been designed and developed by hobbyists that have enabled commercial UAV operations in numerous industries. Surveying and agricultural, agriculture, pardon me, just to name a couple. Little to no effort has been made by regulatory bodies to educate the public on UAV operations and the relating regulations. It has been the aviation enthusiasts, both manned, model and manned, whom have taken on this challenge with little to no help from regulators. Public education and inclusion is the most effective way to have a safer airspace. More effort should be put into this by, the regula by regulators and coordinated with the content creation side of the whole aviation community. All things considered, a remote ID mandate should not be developed. Failing that, any mandate and subsequent regulation should not require remote ID for a recreational craft under one kilogram and should consider remote ID for all commercial users over one kilogram self-flying camera drones brought from retail outlets in a ready-to-fly configuration and beyond visual line-of-sight operations. The exemption of craft under one kilogram would allow for the continued enjoyment of the hobby and continue the positive effects model aviation has upon the community at large and future innovation in the field. It will also leave open the door to future generations just let us fly our toy craft in the yard and we will be the best observers a regulator could ask for. We look up when we hear a craft. 
We want a safe sky. We will report on safe users. Please do not exclude us from something we love. This section here is pertaining to the remote identification document discussion paper for public consultation, which you can find if you drop that in Google or uh, click the link I'll put down below to a copy of the document. Um, basically just quotes a bit, puts my comments in, quotes another bit, comment, so on and so forth. Uh, if you want to read it, feel free to pause. Uh, I won't go into it too much. It's more or less a, a lot of repeating what has been already been discussed. Um, yes. So that is my submission. There you go. Um, I don't really know what else to say. Uh, look, I know it's not covered everything. I know I'm probably going to piss off people who fly one and a half kilogram craft. But we've got to have a give and take. Um, it's obvious. Uh, otherwise, we're going to get freaking railroaded and we'll get nothing. So, um, yeah. Maybe I should have pushed for one and a half kilogram, but I pushed for a kilogram because that's what I think is a sensible level. And if we don't get that, they'll probably think half a kilogram is more like it. But at least that'll keep most of our five inch stuff in the air. Um, and a little push innovation. It'll, having the under one kilogram space will push innovation, especially to get the electronics lighter. So it won't be so damaging. I just, uh, I don't know. I hope you guys listen to. Please do like and subscribe. Share this video if you want to help. That's the best thing you can do. Share all the videos that you see and comment on them and let the YouTube algorithm know they're important. I saw this die very quickly. Um, you know, you see things come out like, uh, for instance, they lost contact with Voyager 2 recently and suddenly all that stuff's pumped up there. But we have a big issue and basically everyone posts a video about it. Although there are some major people I haven't seen talk about it or some people I consider um, to be somewhat figureheads of the community who haven't talked about it, which is either the algorithm playing shenanigans or them letting the site down and I don't know uh, because the algorithm has been not really pushing these out as much as it should I don't think it's a big issue we've made a lot of videos about it you think simple maths would just go yo push it out and if it has pushed it out and people haven't been watching it who aren't interested that's a real shame and that signifies a problem in our communities because we have this tendency to not care about other people's issues if it's not going to affect us. And I'm just going to say this straight out. That is really selfish. And you should pull your fucking hair. Um, pull your freaking thumb out of your ass. That's what you should do. And go and give a shit about your communities. If that's you. I'm not saying it to be a dickhead. Or to say I'm better than you. Or anything like that. I'm not. I'm just saying it because... If you feel that that hit home, then it needed to be heard. And if you don't feel that it hit home and you agree with me, then hit the thumbs up. Anyway, much love. Peace out. Fly safe. Be well. And I will catch you next time. Rock on.